so Wayne, I just wondered how the Sapphires first sort of came to be. Well, the Sapphires was a stage show back in 2004 in Australia, and it was a bit of a hit. So Tony Briggs, the writer of that show, um, got a number of offers from producers in Australia and around the world. And so basically he, uh, he got some money to write a film script, and uh, Keith Thompson joined forces with him. So, um, and so the last seven years they've worked on the script. And of course the last three or four years they worked on it full time. So until we went into principal photography like 12 months ago. And it must be brilliant to have Tony Briggs on board, and it sort of adds that sort of authenticity to it, having as he's the one who wrote the script and the play as well. Yeah, no, he's been great, and uh, he, he's an actor in Australia and a storyteller as well, and he writes, and uh, he hasn't directed yet, but um, it was great that it was sort of, the genesis came from him, so, you know, it was, it was beautiful. Because this is your debut feature, yeah. it must be such an exciting time for you at the moment. Um, you know, it is, it is. I mean, I was in South Korea last week, and... So I went to Zurich, Hamburg, then I went back to Sydney, I went up to Rockhampton, a small country town in Queensland for a mate's 40th, then I flew straight to Seoul, Korea, and was in Busan, and now I'm in London, and then I go to Dublin tonight. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm seeing the world definitely, so, which is great. And not to take away anything from the film, but are you quite surprised at the sort of level of success you see, particularly sorry, at sort of film festivals as well? Um, you know, Am I surprised? Yeah, I am. I, it, it's, you know, when you write a story or direct a story, you want more people to see it, you know, and so not just people in Australia as well, just to share your story with the world, to give it some, you know, that international sort of appeal, a recognition of some sorts. But um, I, I had no idea it would be this popular, um, you know, out of the 110 territories and countries in the world, it's sold to 110. So it's sort of, for an Australian film, a small little Australian film to do that, uh, yeah, you know, I feel very blessed. Talking of international appeal, how important is Chris O'Dowd uh, to that? Well, at the time, we just wanted the best person for the role, of course, and you hear from the producers, oh, we've got to get a guy, does the numbers, does the numbers, stuff the numbers sometimes, you know. And with Chris, it was, uh, it, it, you know, at that time, Bridesmaids had just got out in America and we were going after him, but he, yeah, he did the numbers in that respect, but he just seemed perfect for it. And just that, you know, him being Irish, as well, it was just brilliant and uh, it worked for us. So, you know, the stars were aligned and I didn't think about it much. As soon as I met him and, you know, we sort of went, okay, let's do this, it was it was just on. Uh, and now it's, yeah, now you feel like sometimes you fluked it. In terms of casting, was it quite difficult to find four girls who could not only uh, act but sing as well? And dance, um, yeah, no, it was. It took us about eight to 12 months and uh, we came down to these last four and so it was a bit of a process, but once we got down to about 16, you sort of could feel, you know, there was four to six to eight girls just like shining through. So, and um, yeah, it was, it, you know, it was, it was, once we chose these four, it was, I didn't lose any night's sleep. Uh, we sort of had to move on and make the film. So yeah, that process took a while, but we got them in the end. And the film strikes a wonderful balance between um, exploring some quite serious themes, the likes of war and, and racism, but having quite a jovial, sort of quite light-hearted approach as well. Was it quite difficult to find that balance and be funny and sort of quite, you know, poignant at the same time? Um, yeah, uh, not only when we, um, only when we found it, uh, or I was in the edit suite, that's when I can see the tone, how, how this, you could really shift the film one way into a certain way. You know, with all those heartfelt scenes, you wanted to sort of explore that and get deep into someone's heart. And uh, for all those comical moments in the film, you just had to explore that. And when a character, like Chris's ca character, is committing to saying Kamara Ganja, like he, or whatever that the, their 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 mission is or what their their old band's name is, he has to commit to that. And uh, that's where we're sort of exploring all the funnier moments. So, look, it was a bit of a fluke. But um, it was all there in the script that Tony and Keith wrote, so I just had to adhere to that. So was Chris's character supposed to be the sort of quite funny, or was that something that he brought himself? No, he was, a, he was sort of, a, there was a comic element, like a, a Hugh Grant for weddings and a funeral, but, or, or you know, one of those roles, uh, Tom Hanks, Lee, their own. Um, it, 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 had, it had just funny lines, uh, but with Chris, uh, he, he just added a few more in, and uh, he made the other lines that Tony and Keith wrote his own. So it's, it's just worked out brilliantly. And this film will resonate with a lot of people, no less than the, the, the original Sapphires themselves. Do you feel almost a responsibility in doing justice to this quite sort of remarkable tale? Yeah, you do. You, there, there is a responsibility and, you know, you sort of, 
you just have to sort of, you know, uh, represent these four ladies in the best possible way and Tony's family first and foremost. And so you have to leave any, any, anything else that sort of requires ego and ambition out the door. So that's what that's what happened originally. So yeah, and it, we continue to do that. And look, their story's being seen by everyone in the world now. So uh, I think they're happy. Yeah. Have you had the chance to speak to them and find out their thoughts in the film? Or? Yeah, you know, like I was uh, said to someone before, the only line that they uh, don't like in the film at the moment is when the young girl says, uh, uh, I've got men lining up to suck my ring off. Um, back to her boyfriend on the phone, which is one of the funnier lines in the film. And um, they didn't look, because, you know, they're just very respectful women. And being young women, they were brought up really well and they wouldn't swear or what have you. Um, so that was one of those moments that they didn't appreciate. But once they, I said this to someone before, once they saw a thousand people laughing at, you know, in Melbourne somewhere, they just went, oh, okay, you can leave it in. I didn't think it was that funny, but yeah, if people are laughing, then it's okay. So uh, what's next for you now? Where did you, sort of, where did you go from here? I mean, there's obviously a considerable amount, amount of pressure than the, on your second film than it was on your first. Yeah, there, there is a little bit. I mean, I got that two or three months ago, but now it's sort of everything's settled. So I'd love to move to London, actually, for, you know, a few months. So... I'm looking at a job over here or, you know, but uh, it, it's, you know, it's just sort of reading and just deciphering and having, and just communicating, meeting with other producers and just seeing if we get on. So I'm just going to take my time for a little bit in the next three or four months. So we might see a sort of an English film uh, come from you, maybe perhaps. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's funny, all the English scripts that I'm receiving, are, all the number of them are just so beautifully written. So, yeah, it's good. Well, thank you so much for your time, Claire. Yeah, thank you. So, thank you, Stefan. Thank you. Thank you.